Hey guys, how's it going? It is February 18th and we got some big news today right before BlizzCon. And maybe you guys have heard, yes, we finally got the official announcement that there is going to be TBC Classic and there's actually a few other notable things in this message. So let's go over this message real quick and break down what those notable things are. Now, first of all, we're reading the message and even though it talks about TBC, it launched back in 2007, it's going to be coming in 2021. It doesn't quite give us yet an exact month or an exact date on when TBC is coming out. Now, this might happen in a couple days when BlizzCon gives us more information. They might tell us an exact date or maybe an estimate on a release date, but as of right now, we don't have one. But if you were to ask me, I would say sometime late spring and maybe middle summer. Another thing that's really, really interesting to point out here is this line here that says sagas unfold over time. Content from the original game will roll out in phases at a cadence paced for the WoW Classic community. Now, this is kind of interesting, and we don't know exactly what this means. Now, they could be mimicking exactly how they did it in Classic WoW, and that's what I suspect. And by that, I mean just having the later tier of talents the later phases of talents not a step-by-step -step change on how challenge how talents changed patch by patch and things of that nature just have the end uh the end patch talents and then release the raids release the dungeons and the content phase by phase just like we did in classic wow how we didn't experience any talent changes it was just more so bug fixes raids releasing and things of that nature there is something important to note here though a lot of items change drastically in TBC. So in TBC, if they end up doing it patch by patch, as in changing how items work, what's bind on pickup, what's unique, what's BOE, and things of that nature, that could drastically change the meta and what classes are good at what point in the game. And mostly what I mean by this, and people in the private server community will know exactly what I'm talking about, melee are particularly weak early on especially if you have a patch by patch basis where you don't have 2.4.3 items out right at the get-go and that is because of the tier 3 blacksmithing weapons the tier 3 blacksmithing weapons are incredibly strong weapons for almost every single melee class and most tanks as well early on into tbc particularly the one-handed mace that procs and gives you a bunch of haste. Now, if they ended up deciding on going patch by patch and changing items as well, and not just releasing raids, that means that these incredible items are going to be main hand instead of one handed. That means classes like rogues, enhancement shamans, fury warriors, and things of that nature, they're not going to be able to use two of these weapons. They're only going able to be used one of these weapons, which is going to limit their DPS compared to being able to equip two because these, uh, these items, once again, are very, very powerful. And you might say, well, Alive, they didn't do that in Classic. Why would they do that now? And that's because they said that they were interested in doing something like that for Classic, but they just didn't have the data from all the way back then. But they do have that data for TBC. So it'll be interesting to see if they are going to release it just like Classic, raid by raid, or if they're actually going to change items patch by patch as well. That'll be a big, big thing. And then, of course, we have some more stuff that we expected, adding Arena PvP system, which is going to be exciting to watch. I know a lot of you guys have been itching for some arena PvP. Me, myself, being part of the CDL League with tips out, it was a lot of fun trying to mimic that arena environment, and now we actually get to have that arena environment. So I know there's going to be a lot of hype tournaments coming in the future for TBC. The next super important thing here to look at, and I know this is kind of a heated topic, is choose your era. A lot of people I know out there said, yeah, well, if they launch TBC, I need it to be a classic, or I need it to be a fresh server because I want to start over as a shaman or as a Draenei or things of that nature, or, or I want a fresh server because screw all those guys that saved up tens and hundreds of thousands of gold, hundreds of thousands of gold, screw those guys, I want a fresh server. So it is interesting here, 
telling us as the player what realms are actually going to be when we do get tbc launched they may have changed this a little bit but as of today this is all we know and that is that players can decide whether they want to advance their character to a burning crusade era realm or to continue playing wow classic content on new classic era servers so my interpretation my interpretation of this is we either have two options we can play on a new classic era server maybe we can also copy our classic uh character over to one of these classic servers and also we have the option of carrying our classic current level 60 characters onto a new tbc realm and starting with our level 60 characters and what they currently have on them Lastly, of course, as we already suspected, it's going to be the same sort of subscription package as we currently have in Classic WoW, and that is if your Battle.net account has a World of Warcraft subscription, then luckily we don't have to pay anything extra. They're not trying to milk us for all our pennies. We just gain access to the Classic client as well, which is a big bonus because we don't want to be paying for two subscriptions. We just want to play our game and have a good time playing it, right guys? Anyways, that is it for the quick update. I am going to be posting some new videos coming up soon, and we're going to be doing a short series on what specs change and what specs are possibly going to be viable in the pre-TBC patch as a level 60 with TBC talents and what exciting differences there are. A lot of classes are changing drastically. Enhancement shamans are actually somewhat viable. Boomkins become good. A lot of classes that had big, big, big problems, even hunters, get a lot of benefits now. So look forward to that series. I thought it was super fun and I love theory crafting, that kind of stuff. Until next time, guys, take care.